The H6K has non-ignorable importance in the balances in the Far East. This bomber, which increases the strategic offensive capability of China, represents a leap forward in the evolution of the good old Tu-16 whose NATO reporting name is Badger. For some, this leap is insignificant, while others think it is really important. As the weapon detective, we're investigating the H6K and what its military value is. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel before we start and give us a thumbs up if you like our video. To be notified of our new video, please click the bell button. The military value of the H6K is indeed a complex issue. It is not a technologically superior bomber, just a highly modified variant of the 1950s vintage Tu-16. However, as we often emphasized in our previous videos, whether a system works is more important than whether it is technologically superior or not. Before analyzing the H6K from this point of view, let's take a brief look at the history of this bomber. The Soviet Tu-16 jet-powered strategic bomber was introduced in 1954. Five years later, China started to produce this aircraft under license under the name of H-6. But the production work stopped shortly after due to the Sino-Soviet split. With the normalization of relations between the two countries, it resumed in 1964. The first Chinese production variant of the aircraft, H-6A, made its first flight in December 1968. This was a nuclear bomber. However, in the same years, China was working on nuclear ballistic missiles. So the H-6 program lost this priority. Even so, the Chinese Xi'an company has continued to develop and produce the newer versions of the aircraft, including nuclear conventional bomber, reconnaissance, anti-surface warfare, targeting, electronic warfare, and aerial refueling. The H-6K and its naval version, the H-6J, are the last representatives of this adventure. The H-6K made its first flight on January 5th 2007. It entered service in 2009. The aircraft is quite different from its predecessors. The H6K has the D30KP2 turbofan engines and enlarged air inlets. By using composite material, the weight is reduced and structural strength is increased. The H6K has a modern glass cockpit with a large size LCD multifunction displays. The redesigned nose houses a modern surface search radar. Behind the radar, there is a forward-looking infrared turret. The electronic warfare systems replace the tail guns. The dorsal and ventral radomes probably house advanced communication systems. The H6K retains its bomb bay, but in general use, the aircraft carries extra fuel in this bay while the missiles and bombs are mounted on the wing pylons. Besides, the H6J, the later variant of the H6K, has a refueling probe. The crew has the HTY-6F ejection seats. The People's Liberation Army Air Force deploys its H-6Ks in the inner side of the country. The 22nd Air Regiment in Shaodong, the 24th Air Regiment in Liyang, the 28th Air Regiment in Anqin, the 108th Air Regiment in Wugong, and the 106th Air Brigade in Dangzhou have these aircraft. Naturally, the People's Liberation Army Naval Air Force deploys its H-6Js near the coasts. The 1st Independent Regiment in Gaiping and the 5th Independent Regiment in Changzhou have them. There is no reliable information about the general characteristics of the H-6K. Some sources claim that the aircraft has a 4-man crew. Some others mention 3-man. It is estimated that the H-6K has a length of approximately 35 meters, a wingspan of 33 meters, and a height of 10.5 meters. The maximum takeoff weight is about 95,000 kilograms. Two 118 kN D30KP2 turbofan engines provide high subsonic speed. According to many sources, the combat radius of the aircraft is 3,500 kilometers. But for example, Kanwa Asian Defense which is one of the most reliable magazines about the region, claims that this radius is only 2,500 km. The D30KP2 engine provides 30% more thrust and 20% less fuel consumption than the previous H6's WP8 engine. This means more weapon capacity, 
and a longer range. As one of the most reliable Soviet engines, the D-30's variant also powers the MiG-31 interceptor as well as the IL-76 and Y-20 military transport aircraft. It is known that China is working on the reverse-engineered version of the D-30 called WS-18. By aerial refueling, the H-6K and the H-6J can conduct attacks on the second island chain in the Pacific. This chain contains Guam Islands, where there are important naval and air force facilities. The H-6K can carry six CJ-10A cruise missiles, which has a range of over 1,500 km and a circular error probable of 10 meters. This gives the People's Liberation Army Air Force a long-range standoff offensive air capability with precision-guided munitions. The anti-ship version of the missile, YJ-100, has a range of 800 km. In 2019, China tested a large yield bomb, which is similar to the US GBU-43B Massive Ordnance Air Blast, aka the mother of all bombs. The H-6K can drop this bomb. Interestingly, the explosive material of the GBU-43B is called the composition H-6. The H-6J has eight underwing pylons instead of six. In a typical mission, the aircraft is equipped with four YJ-12 and two YJ-83K anti-ship missiles as well as two electronic warfare pods. The YJ-83K is a high subsonic speed anti-ship missile whose range is 180 km. The YJ-12 has a maximum speed of Mach 4 and a range of 400 km. The H-6K and H-6Js have been very active. Since 2012, the new Chinese bombers have repeatedly flown over the air defense identification zone of Taiwan. So, they have faced the interceptors of the Republic of China Air Force many times. Again, since 2015, China has shown off over the Miyako Strait by its new bombers. This approximately 250 km wide strait is a waterway that lies between Miyako and Okinawa Islands. It has a global geopolitical significance as it is one of the few international waterways for the Chinese Navy to access the Pacific Ocean from the East China Sea. Japan requires that China has to inform them in advance if Chinese naval vessels sail through the strait. Yet, Beijing has never accepted this requirement. So whenever the H-6Ks and H-6Js fly over the Miyako Strait, the Japan Air Self-Defense Force scrambles its F-15s to intercept them. On July 23, 2019, two Chinese H-6Ks flew over the Japan Sea together with two Russian Tu-95MS. This time, the South Korean fighter jets also joined the Japan Air Self-Defense Force's F-2s and F-15s to intercept them. These bombers have also badgered the Philippines. On March 30, 2015, the H-6Ks were over the Bashi Channel, which is a waterway between the Philippine Movulis and the Taiwanese Orchid Islands. On July 16, 2016, these bombers showed themselves again near the Philippine Scarborough Shoal. China claims sovereignty over these two rocks. As you see, the H-6K and H-6J constantly keep the other countries in the region on the hub. They are the messengers who declare Beijing has sovereignty claims all over the East Pacific and China could demonstrate its power anywhere, anytime. Thanks to their long range and capability of carrying long range missiles, these bombers disturb the balance. The USA and Japan have to distribute their air power over a wide area against the threat posed by the H-6K. The weak Philippine Air Force has to acquire more capable fighters to defend its sovereignty rights. Considering its payload and range, the H-6K multiplies China's strategic air power over previous H-6 models. However, unlike the B-2, this low-speed and non-stealth aircraft does not have the capability to determine the fate of a possible battle in the region on its own. That's why China is working on developing an aircraft called the H-2 to rival the B-2. This will show whether its technological capability is enough for this ambitious plan. The highly sophisticated and expensive B-2 was designed to conduct deep strikes on the Soviet Union during the 1980s. 
However, after the first Cold War ended, the USA, which originally intended to buy 132 B2s, reduced this number to 20. Because the simple and cost-effective B-52 was enough to handle the rest of the tasks. From this perspective, the H-6K also seems to have enough capacity for the rest of the tasks. This aircraft can rely on its own electronic warfare systems to protect itself just like the B-52. But in our opinion, if the H-6K had enough electronic warfare systems, it would have used them to show off at least a few times until now. Still, this aircraft provides an important trump card for China over the Pacific. A single regiment has 18 H-6Ks, which can carry over 100 YJ-12 supersonic anti-ship missiles. Let's talk about a speculative scenario. A typical carrier strike group of the US Navy depends on its E-2 Hawkeyes as the first echelon of its air defense. These early warning aircraft, which fly 190 km ahead of the main force, can detect a threat from about 500 km. Therefore, E-2 can find the H-6K strike group before they launch their missiles. So far, so good. But there are only two FA-18EF which are positioned 300 km ahead of the main force in the air for the combat air patrol mission. They can intercept some of the hostile. Until other Super Hornets scramble, the other H-6Ks can launch their missiles. While at least 50 YJ-12 cruise supersonically toward the carrier strike group, the Aegis ship begin to fire their SM-6 missiles. However, currently most of the Aegis ships can eliminate only 3 or 4 targets. If 20 YJ-12 manage to avoid the SM-6s, the phalanxes can intercept them at the range of 1500 meters. Even if these close weapon systems manage to destroy all the missiles, the splinters will still damage the fleet. China would sacrifice 18 H-6Ks to hurt a US carrier strike force. Of course, this is not an inevitable scenario. But this nightmarish possibility forces the US Navy to modernize its existing Aegis fleet and increase its interception capability. In another scenario, Let's give the YJ-100 missiles with a range of 800 km a roll. In this scenario, the H-6Ks can fire their missiles before being detected by the E-2s. But 800 km is a very long range. Another aircraft is needed to detect and eliminate targets beforehand. The Hawkeyes would easily locate this aircraft and the Super Hornets would shoot it down quickly. Also, for ship-based air defense systems, it is much easier to hunt the subsonic YJ-100s than the YJ-12s. The USA would have no trouble protecting the islands in the second chain from a possible H-6K raid. An attack with subsonic missiles could only be really destructive if they are equipped with nuclear warheads. But this turns into a completely different scenario, which is a nuclear apocalypse. Just like other strategic bombers, the H-6K gives China the chance to attack targets outside and behind the front. Thus, it forces the opponents to keep some of their aircraft and air defense systems to areas outside the front. Technologically speaking, the H-6K does not represent a significant achievement. It is barely a modern weapon system. However, with this aircraft, China forces its opponents to make new moves on the chessboard and it blocks the movements of some chess pieces. In this perspective, the H-6K is a considerably successful weapon system with a high military value. Thanks for watching our video. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and give us a thumbs up if you liked our video. To be notified of our new videos, please click the bell button.